What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Dude, I'm doing great. So I don't get to, I guess I do get to see you quite a bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you're back down in Tampa. Love it here. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, do you think you're going to become a Florida resident? I think we're going to definitely own property here. You think so? But so, I don't, yeah, I think we'll all, I think Arizona will always be our home base, but we're going to own property here for sure. You know, I kind of feel like in your heart of hearts, Florida <laughs> really wants to be home. And I feel like your wife is saying that Arizona is going to be home. Um, I think it's a combination of both. If, if Florida didn't have the humidity, we'd be fine. We can do it full time. But yeah. Well, I'm glad to have you back, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. So, so listen, man, I want to, you know, you and I don't get to do too many of these too often. So I want to bring like extreme value to the audience today. And I, one of the biggest things we've been hearing about, I know you're dealing with a lot, you know, we've been dealing with a lot in the consulting side. There's all this stuff going on is customers are really focused on improving the careers of their people. I mean, you hear it all the time, yep. don't you? And I feel like over the last couple of years, especially going through COVID and all these different things, I feel like, I feel like us taking the time and building these methodologies and models, and obviously with your experience doing this you know, across the nation, I feel like it's time for us to talk about really good career pathing for technicians. Are you okay with that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so I guess like, I mean, let's talk about it. So from your perspective, like if you had to say, Seth, step one, like how, what is that from your perspective in, you know, on the ops side? Yeah. And, and, and before we get into step one, let's think about what typically happens, right? So yeah. we have a few technicians, maybe three or four, and it's time to get a manager. What happens? We usually take the most senior technical guy that we think because he's been here forever, he should be a manager. Yeah. So his career path goes from running a route to now running a group of people. And sometimes that plan doesn't work out. They're not good leaders. They're not, they just don't have the background for it. And it's normal. We've all done it. But the reality is technicians want to be able to grow in their role without having to run a department. And so with career pathing, step one is to figure out what, what services do you cover? What technical expertise do we want our basic technician to do? And then we break it out from there where we have different skill sets and you create what I like to call like five different levels. So uh, a new hire or apprentice and then a level one tech, level two, and you can name it whatever you want, but all the way up to level five, which would be like a supervisor or a service manager. And the goal is to give that technician more responsibility over time and more technical expertise, increase their salary, but create a way that 80% of your technicians are between that level two and that level four mark. So they have something to look forward to to progress in their career and move forward. Because the reality is not everybody wants to be a service manager. Not everybody wants to be a team lead. Um, so, but we, they do want to, they do want to grow. And so we have to provide a way for them to grow and still stay a technician. So one of the things that comes up all the time when these plans get built and, you know, you've done dozens of these, we've done dozens of these in the company. It's, it's, you know, what happens as they get to that level four and maybe level five doesn't exist or what happens when you run out of opportunity? Yeah. Like, how do you think about that? Yeah. You have to get creative and have you know, different incentives. One of my favorite things to do is come up with a training bonus. So you can have a level four technician that's amazing at taking care of customers and he's amazing at, or her, you know, they're amazing at taking care of, of training, but they don't want to, they don't want to lead people. So let's create a bonus for them. Let's pay the level four technician 500 bucks for every new hire they train after they've owned the training for 90 days and that technician gets licensed. So there's still ways for them to advance with their, with their, you know, financially and within their career. And the, a lot of them are happy with that because they still get more responsibility, but not all the responsibility of running a team. Yeah. So, so just, just because people are going to listen to this and it's such an important topic. So, so let's kind of talk slowly through it. So if I am a company, I'm the CEO and you're helping me build this. Like, mm -hmm. so what would we call level one? Level one, I like to call that the apprentice phase. Because um, it really sets the stage. Um, the good thing about having an apprentice or a new hire level one stage is it doesn't matter what kind of experience they have in the industry. When you come to our company, you're starting here. Now, you can progress up quicker to a senior technician by proving that you're, you're skilled and taking the test to prove it. But you start on that level one. So, so then as a level one, 
What would be a couple of high level criteria that people could think about before they move into level two? Level one, it would probably, if you're a residential, primarily residential company. Sure. Um, think about just general pest control. Maybe um, you, you're, you're not doing any termite work yet. You're just doing typical GHP and that's it. Hmm. Now to progress up, you're gonna learn more about uh, stored product pests or maybe German roaches, but at the beginning, just typical exterior, interior treatments for ants, spiders, crickets, that type of thing. And have some sort of validation around it. Yep. So, so then we move from level one to level two. What yep. would we call level two? What would you think about? Level two is going to be like your junior technician. Uh, for simplicity, we could just say level two for now. Sure. Level two, now we're getting into more like maybe some stored product pests, some one-off issues, maybe bed bugs, depending on your market. Some of the things that you don't see every day, but take more training to learn. Okay, and then you move from level two to level three. Yep. What so does that look like? Level three, typically now you can, your, your termite license too, you can sell termite, you can talk about termite. We built a good foundation of just keeping it simple and so we don't overload them over time and now they can do termite. Um, maybe they're doing more uh, ladder works and stuff that takes more safety training and we build from there. All right, well, you know what I'm gonna ask next. Yeah. So you go from level three yep. to level four. Now level four, now you can pass that knowledge on. So you've pretty much, uh, you know, you've covered everything that your company offers. The level four technician is fully skilled in it. And now we train him to be the trainer. Um, this person might end up being a leader at some point in time by moving to level five, might not. Either way, we're gonna train them to be the trainer to give them the opportunity. Uh, and then they can pass that knowledge down and we keep continuing that path. All right, well, here we go. Yep. So now we move to level five. What does level five look like? Level five, now we're getting into basic P&L management. You know, they're responsible for understanding what, you know, material usage is, um, labor rates. We're, we're slowly building onto that to make them a really good service manager. KPIs are increasing. We're talking more about on time, you know, how, how quickly we're getting the services, how many we can do a day. And so we're building our leadership bench at that point. Yeah, and, and, and as I hear about it, it was, it was interesting. So, la well, our last, on one of our last sessions, we had Steve Good here, a yep. good friend of yours. Yep. And, you know, Steve had talked about the career pathing in the sales force. Yeah. Um, and by the time this comes out, people would have already watched that because it actually isn't available just yet, that one. But, right. and, and he had talked about the same thing, about the structure, about how to build the sales organization. And so, you know, on the service ops side, which you're, in, you know, obviously one of the best at, is do you see companies as they start to scale up, thinking about the same process cross departmentally? So, you know, service uh, service ops, customer service, mm -hmm. finance, all the way down. Would you suggest the same kind of thing across the board like that? Yeah, across the board. And I think, you know, if you're going to go from technician to sales, you don't just jump into a senior sales position because you were a team lead. On the, on the technician side, you start at the bottom and you progress your way back up. Yeah, and, and so I think like, you know, hearing you talk about it too, it's like, it makes me think about, um, you know, last year at our conference where we comp brought that concept of kind of learn versus no to the table, right? And like, yep. and you know, in learn versus no, we talked about, hey, someone really needs to learn something, not just know a metric. Yep. And we're really saying the same thing. So you're, based on the career path that you just laid out in a simple form, mm -hmm. is we're giving someone the opportunity to actually learn the job, right, before we expect them to know exactly what the outcome looks like. Yep. And so, you know, ultimately, ultimately, I think from a technician standpoint, it really makes a technician feel bought into the company, uh, under, makes them think about that you're looking out for their career, um, ultimately, if somebody came and offered them another dollar, they're probably going to be fairly committed to your business. Mm -hmm. um, and then frankly, you're giving them path to the future, right? Yeah. And so, you know, as I hear it, I go, you know, you know, my original question is what happens when you run out of jobs? I mean, to me, I think that what happens for, at the highest level is that if we have people progressing, I think the onus then shifts, right? So the onus is on them to progress their career. Mm -hmm. But now I think the onus becomes us for leadership to ensure that the people that want to move forward, that we can actually create the opportunities, whether it's grow the business, whether it's become more efficient, whatever that may look like, yep. in order to actually provide futures for people. I mean, I'm sure you would agree to that. Yeah, definitely. And also, you know, our biggest problem in our industry is probably people, like yeah. managing people. And one thing that we do a terrible job at is uh, fair compensation. We don't realize we're doing a bad job at it, um, but we'll bring somebody in who has 10 years experience and they negotiate 
three more dollars an hour yeah. than somebody you've had for two years already. And so with the career pathing, it's transparent. You put it on the board, level one makes this, level two makes this, level three makes that. And so you get rid of all that jealousy and all that confusion on the pay. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and you know, and I've watched, I've actually watched you present this to a company and, and it's almost like an aha moment, you know, like it's one thing, like it's one thing if I get up on top on a stage and talk about it and everyone's like, wow, that's an amazing process. And we show the diagrams and all that. Mm -hmm. But when the rubber meets the road and you explain it to a CEO, well, it, you know, and they walk and walk through it, like simplifies their whole life. Mm -hmm. And the other part that is that when that person, the CEO or whoever's doing hiring can flip that over and show somebody when they're coming into the organization, the exact path to hit their financial goal, career goal, and really understand what their future looks like. I, yeah. I think it like creates, creates, you know, what we keep talking about in our, in our industry, which is, you know, future proofing our industry and ensuring that, you know, we can develop people who see pest control as a true profession, mm -hmm. you know, versus just a job. I yeah. mean, you think so? Definitely. And it also helps. There's benefits to it that people don't realize when you're interviewing a new technician and they're interviewing against three other companies. If you show them the career path, they're like, okay, I get it. And they go to two other interviews and it's just, you get hired, you're a technician and that's it. There's no future for them. So you can actually paint the picture for them at the beginning and then your retention is better because you're providing value. Yeah, I, uh, I saw a really unique, I actually saw a really unique application of what we're talking to a couple of weeks ago. And, and it was a very similar scenario you just described. So technician comes into interviews, technician that anyone would hire, mm -hmm. um, multi-license, a ton of experience, and comes into an organization, organization presents the program, and the program of apprentice, then level one, level two, they had some different names for it. Yep. And the guy goes, there's no way I'm gonna start as an apprentice, I got 10 years experience. And the CEO goes, everyone starts as an apprentice. However, your career, you've been to six companies over the last 12 years, mm -hmm. which is, probably okay in, in today's world. And the reality, the reality is, is that you're going to be here a year and a half to two years if I agree with what you're saying and I just pay you more today. Yep. And so what I'm going to give you is I'm actually going to give you a path to the future. And the guy goes, he goes, do you want to come to work for our company? And I was actually involved in this discussion. And the guy goes, well, you know, pay, 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 pay. He said, do you, would you like to come to work for our company? He goes, I got to go check, check with my wife. We fast forward two days. So what they did, which I didn't know, and I thought it was a beautiful practice, they took the career path, mm -hmm. had it nice and laminated, and they said, take it home and talk to your wife about it. And they did. And sure enough, they got this guy. Now, you know, people who are listening to this go, oh, well, we just beat this guy up on cost or on, on, a, on pay. But the, actual, the reality is we didn't. What we actually did is show this guy that he now has a career, mm -hmm. which he had never been shown before. And he had actually worked for two national companies. Yeah. Um, he worked in tertiary markets for the national companies and never experienced it. And so the decision that him and his wife made was that he's a professional in pest control. Mm -hmm. He's a lifetime technician, not yeah. service manager, to your point. And he had decided to come with the company. And frankly, like his number one decision was they showed him a career path. And what his wife said to him, which I thought was very interesting, his wife said, hey, you're negotiating over $3 an hour. That's $120 a, $120 a week. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is that that doesn't change our life. She worked as well. And if you do well, this company is going to make more money. And now you have a career that you can count on. You don't have to worry about getting fired. Yep. It was like this, like... Like I almost get like, you know, yeah. talking about it. And so hearing you talk about it with someone with your background um, and knowing and seeing it work for years mm -hmm. and now being able to replicate this across, you know, dozens of companies across the U.S. now, it's a uh, pretty impactful stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get really creative with it, too. You can maybe your senior technician is really good with customers, right? He's great with Mrs. Jones. He can take care of problems, but he couldn't train his way out of a wet paper bag which is fine, but there's other things that you can do. Maybe you increase his sales commission by a percentage or, or the, for that level. Um, or maybe they get a, a, another bump on their production pay. Whatever you wanna do, there's ways to make it better as you progress up. Yeah, I think it's super valuable, man. So, I mean, so any other last thoughts on this? I mean, I think, I think, I think our community is gonna love this. I think mm -hmm. that a lot of people are gonna take this and do the best they can implement it. Um, but any other thoughts on this? Uh, just put pen to paper and start like think about it you know break your break your roles out in the four to five different levels and create a plan yeah i i love it and um you know my my final thoughts here is that 
and and we've worked through these playbooks before is like I would I would tell somebody to get that get their org chart di- diagrammed out, mm-hmm. look at what they want their future organization to look like, even if it's on a yellow notepad, doesn't matter, yep. and then take every one of those those roles mm-hmm. at, at what your future company looks like. And then design what you want to call it and make it culturally feel good and stuff yeah. like that, which I know you do a, you've done a brilliant job of. Yep, so definitely. So well, cool, man. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Anytime. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's uh, obviously it's great, man. It's great to have you. So yep. I will uh we'll see you on the flip side. All right, man. Appreciate see you, man. it.